Welcome to the Marriage Can Win Show, and we are your relationship experts. I'm Eric, and this is my wife, Dr. Sakisha Hiling, and we are so glad that you join us this day on Saturday. Oh, we have a special edition with our special guest. So we like the, for everyone out there to do one of two things. Share this broadcast out. Start a watch party. Also, go to Instagram and follow us on Instagram on the Marriage Can We. So let's get started. Dr. Sakisha Halleck, we're going, she's going to do our introduction of our special edition uh, a speaker today. Wow. Well, thank you so much, honey. I am super, super excited. We have a passion for marriages and relationships. And joining us today on this special edition, we have Dr. Cassandra, a.k.a. Coach Cass, joining us today. <laughs> Hey, hey y'all! <laughs> so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Coach Cass. You don't know how much it means to us for you to take time out of your schedule and spend some time and just pour into the listeners. Especially on a Saturday. Yeah. Hey. And you have such a wealth of experience that you are bringing to the table that they are going. I'm sure that everybody has their pen and their paper ready. As you come on to the broadcast, make sure you put in the city and state you're listening from. And don't forget to share it out. Don't be stingy. Everyone else needs this information yes. as well. So share, share, share. share I'm sharing too right now. I'm <laughs> sharing with one hand. <laughs> well, today we have with us Coach Cass. She's an intuitive love coach and matchmaker for successful women with InspireMany.com. Coach Cass sets stages of flame as an in-demand speaker and a TEDx presenter. She's the creator of the Love Deck dating conversation cards. Her voice has graced the airwaves weekly on the number one radio show in South Florida and has hosted the television show Physically Fit. Coach Cass chronicled and featured by Women's Day, a fast company and black enterprise, just to name a few. She's the author of Princess Zara's Birthday Tradition. And you can all you can often find her relaxing on the beaches of, of the world with her husband Andy and her daughter Ava, jamming to reggae vibes. Join her in her premier private community for single professional women at reallovenetwork.com. And don't worry if you miss any of that information, we're going to make sure we get it in your hands because there's a wealth of information about to flow across the screen. So have your pen and your paper ready. Coach Cass, how are you doing today? Woo! I am so excited, Dr. Sakisha <laughs> and Eric, to be here on a Saturday talking to y'all. I appreciate you. You know, I should edit my bio to say instead of on the beaches, of the world, we're we're dancing in my living room. To <laughs> <laughs> no, right. <laughs> yeah, I do. Hey, yeah. right here. <laughs> we're safe at home. Safe yeah. at home. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Definitely. All right. So tell our listeners a little bit about you. I mean, you're a phenomenal woman, but I want you to just take a second. Just tell our listeners a little bit about you, about you know, your background, your business. Because, you know, for us, we're like, oh, it's Coach Cash and they're, Cash, and they're yes. like, oh, well, t tell me some more about right, it. You were talking right. about Who are you and why should I care? Right. OK. <laughs> all right. So here we go. What's up, y'all? Hello to the wonderful Marriage Can Win family. So happy to be here on this platform. So I'll share with you a little bit about my story. Right. So just in case you've never heard of me, we're going to get a little close. I'm going to share some stuff. So pay attention. Okay. Um, once upon a time, I was dating a guy that I thought was the one. Anybody here ever thought somebody was the one before? Put the number one in the chat, whether you're watching live or the replay or listening in. Right. So for me, I um, I traveled the world with this guy. I, I built business with him. We talked about a future together. I just knew that I knew that he was the one for me until one Christmas <clears throat> Eve. I got a phone call, y'all. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when I answered the phone, my friend was like, hey, are you sitting? I said, well, well, why? You know, that's never a good, that's never a good thing, y'all. And um, he said, well, you know that guy? I'm like, yeah, what about him? He's married. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh. He's married. 
So my heart shattered into a million pieces on the floor. I don't know about any of y'all, but have you ever gotten a call that you weren't expecting, whether it was regarding your finances, your health, your faith, anything, right? And so for me, I felt like the bottom fell out. And so I was in a really dark place for a really long time. Anybody ever been in a dark place before? Like, seriously, just wasn't (laughs) expecting that curveball. And um, I kept dating, but um, I kept dating the wrong person. Yeah. over and over and over, <laughs> right? Like toxic relationship after toxic relationship. I was like, this something's got to give. The, yeah. the guilt, the shame. I felt like somebody kept calling me to tell me how stupid I was, but nobody was calling me. It was my own negative thoughts. And so my defining moment came, y'all, when I, when I, uh, I got like my 29th wedding invitation. Y'all ever felt like everybody was getting married? It didn't matter, wage, age, size, race, hair color, none of it, right? Everybody was getting married. I was like, wait a second, I'm cute. Like what's what's going on here? So that's when I had to say, I had to do the work. Go ahead and put hashtag do the work, right? So I had to do the work when it came to love because part of me felt like there had to be some magic fairy dust that I needed to go buy somewhere and I wasn't finding it, right? Like where is it? I went to Disney, you know, behind the castle, they sprinkled magic fairy dust on you, but I still didn't find love back there, y'all. Like there was nobody giving out love. And so just like Rashida had love and Maria had love, Ellen has love, Cass wanted love too. So for me, number one, I had to become a student of love. Just like I was a student in business and invested in my business, invested in my fitness, invested in my travel, well, before this, right? So I had to invest in my love life. So I I read almost every book I could find on love, almost a hundred books. I was consuming it like fried chicken. I like fried chicken. Anyway, so you know, I, I was consuming the books all day, every day. Then I went to marriage conferences as a single person. Yeah, yeah, you heard that right. So I, I have a, a, a Facebook image from back in the day. Y'all got to search my timeline. It, it literally, you know, when you put your, your face in the cutout, it was <laughs> the face of a bride and, and a hole for the groom. And everybody's like, uh, Cass, like, where's the groom? I'm like, he's coming, y'all. He's coming. He's coming. <laughs> and, and, and then I interviewed couples, right, who had been married for over 25 years and actually still liked each other. Ahem. And y'all know a lot about that, right? So yes. it's like... <laughs> I don't. I, I knew a lot of grumpy married folk that yeah. were not selling marriage at all. I was like, I don't right. know if I want this, right? So I had to search the nation for couples that actually still liked each other over 25 years to say, okay, well, maybe there's something to this. And then I interviewed successful women that were successful in business and in love because a part of me felt like you couldn't do the both of them at the same time. How many times do we have that girlfriend that's like, nah, man, I'm gonna secure the bag. I'm gonna you know, focus on my career. I'm gonna get my degrees and love will come later. And yeah. yet love still hasn't come. You know, so for me, I had to do a huge mindset shift. And really, that is a part of what brought me along the journey to attract my amazing husband, Andy. And now we have a beautiful baby girl named Ava. And, you know, when I looked up, you know, and I looked around, I said, wow, I didn't even know a life like this was was capable. Like I was capable of having such an amazing marriage and, you know, give thanks to God. But it's just like, there's so many people that we know that are settling, you know, right? Eric and Sakisha, like we know so many people that are settling in a situationship or relation thing. And so that's when I realized that my calling was to work with women specifically around um, attracting the right kind of love into their lives, starting with themselves. You know, self-love to real love is the journey that I take women on. And that really started from my own journey. So that's a little bit about where I came from, where I'm at. Yeah, wow. Wow. I like that. So for those <laughs> of you that are listening, I want you to post in the comments, self-love to real love. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Coach Cash. I yes. love, that. love that. Self-love to real love. And that is powerful because that's that's one of the things I wanted to, to tap into with you today, that when you are encountering these successful women and there, I found some women that are willing to compromise just to say they have someone. Mm. And one thing you said, persons like, I have to have yeah. the right one. You need yes. to find the one. So, how many people are actually willing to be patient until they find Ooh, the one? Girl, mm. look, we all know somebody that's settling in a thing yes. for a warm body, especially during this quarantine. Yes. You know, I, yes. I have to talk. I have to talk to some of my clients, like y'all. 
You only <laughs> met him one time online. This is not the second date does not need to be in your living room on a bare skin rug. Okay. Ooh, yes, yes. Okay. Some people are about it. Uh, a little bit too early in the in right. the sequence. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. um yeah, I definitely do talk to women about taking it slow because okay. this is what I find, right? Mm -hmm. We have all these morals and values and this long list. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I got to wait until I find, you know, my six foot two, you know, <laughs> chocolate, thin, whatever, seven figure guy. And then you connect with one brother and he's kind of cute and he has all his teeth and he smiles at <laughs> his jokes. You're like, ah, you know, the list, whatever. And then you end up in a situation with someone way too early. Yeah. And a part of that, Sakisha and Eric, is because, you know, a lot of professional women are busy, right? So mm -hmm. they're not used to dating as a verb, right? right. They, they, they're like, okay, well, you're cool. I'll get to know you. Six months down the line, you're like, well, why did I do that? Right? Because <laughs> you committed to one person right. that wasn't committed to you. So right. it, 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 that's a different pandemic that's happening across yes. the world. It's the pandemic of settling too soon. Settle-itis, you know, is what I like to call it. Like you know, they got the settle-itis going on. And it's, like, and, it's, and it's not that time. I need you to date. Dating yes. is a verb. Mm -hmm. yes. I yes, love it. it love it. Love it. Well, settle-itis. You know, yeah, I like you, that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, that that's, that's really um, what we always have our clients is because they rushed into something and they mm. tried to make it work yeah. and they didn't take the time to get really to get to one know another. one another. Um, and you know, that's our biggest thing. We have, you know, our first book was about the three biggest issues that causes marriages to fail yeah. mm. one being communication and that's mm -hmm. really the key out of it. Yeah. And two being finance and three being intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the first piece communication. So if people can at the beginning when they meet, you know, someone take their time and communicate and expect, you know, express what they expect. Perfect. And that's part of the communication. So now they can be on one accord. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, we've, uh, I mean, even up until the sixties, we've had couples that were yes. married three times. Yes. Right. <clears throat> and on the third time they were getting married in their sixties, well off, retired, and they were like, okay, where are, are you going to move to California? And the other one's like, for what? I got a house here in Florida. Why would yeah. I move to California? Yeah. And like, wait a minute. Uh, I thought you were going to move to California. We got married. At, you know, They got married and had not had this conversation. <laughs> had this conversation. It's a problem. Is now, third marriage in the 60s, retired. Yes. You would think they would have learned something. Right. I need everybody to read your book. What's the name of your book, guys? A marriage can win. Yes. Yes. I need I need everybody to buy the book that is watching right now. And and you see, I'm trying I'm trying to put y'all out of business. You know why? Because I'm trying to save the women from the beginning. You know, save yeah. the women from the beginning because they end up on your couch, right? They end up in your room. Like, why? Why did I do this? And we all have that couple that we know yeah. that knew from the beginning they shouldn't have married who they married, yeah. and they did anyway. Mm -hmm. So if y'all exactly. know a couple like that, make sure you connect them or slide in the DM of Eric and Dr. Sakisha so that they can help them out in this quarantine situation, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, well, see, this I is have where we question. need this is going to be a good conference where we have singles <laughs> and married couples, yeah. mm -hmm. and we have the expert, Coach Cass. All right, <laughs> we have to bring you on. Hey, ready? I have a question. So, when you're when you're dealing with a lot of these single professional women, what's their or what's the rationale that they've given to you that they were willing to ignore a lot of these red flags That's that right. you have from the beginning? You know, sometimes they, well. What's your what's your perspective? <laughs> so, so I specifically am thinking of one client that kept dealing with her ex, right? So her she 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 was like, you know, there's something amazing about him. We connect, we laugh, we have a good time, but he's inconsistent, right? And this last time around, they decided to quarantine together. And he wanted to go back to his hometown. And she's like, okay, go ahead. And he said, no, no, I'm gonna stay. And then maybe two days later, he said, I should have listened to myself and left. 
And oh. where that left her was heartbroken, right? And maybe wow. he came, he he dropped off like a letter, mm -hmm. a nine page letter, not even a four page letter, y'all, a nine page mm -hmm. letter right. at Jesus. her at her front doorstep, like two weeks later. She didn't even know that he was gone out of the state, right? That's just rude. And just expressing himself in poetry. I'm like, you need to let that man go. Like, let it go. I don't care how familiar, because I tell you what messes people up, good sex, right? Yeah. Good yeah. sex, right? So when, when you out here just having sex and willy-nilly and it's all good, it's hard for you to say goodbye, especially in times like this. So wow. these are the issues of connection that yeah. we have real problem with. So yeah, that's, that's why I came out with this, right, y'all? So this is yeah. the love deck, and literally, it's to cause more meaningful conversation. And let me just see. Let's see. Oh, look at this. What is your relationship with your parents? You know, um, you know what happens when people are dating. You already know what happens when people are dating, right? So you're sexy. I'm sexy. We like each other. What we eat for dinner, right? And then you get married, and then that's pretty much all that happens. Only thing is you're not as sexy anymore. And you leave your cock <laughs> on the floor. And why is your underwear next to the hamper and not in the hamper? You know, and we don't talk about yes. the meaningful things, whether you're single or married, right? We're talking about yeah. who's gonna do the dishes and mm -hmm. who's gonna order the food. And it's and it's sad. It's just really sad. Wow. Yeah, it is. That's, that's like really, really important. Now, I have a question for you. It's like, um, as a uh, entrepreneur, as a businesswoman, as a love coach, mm -hmm. you wear so many hats. You're married. You have you you have a beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. How do you balance it all? Because oh, I'm sure man. some of our listeners out there might be wondering. Because oh, yes. a lot of times we're like, "Well, I have this. I have that." You have a coach lot of Cass, professionals. Tell them. How yes. to so I'm I'm gonna give you the in quarantine and out of quarantine. <laughs> okay. Answer, right. Okay. So we safe at home right now. So we're right. still trying to get this get this together. However many months in we are. And so <laughs> lately, what I've been doing. So for all my people that are trying to figure out how to balance out marriage and family and you in this process, is I create a nightly schedule for my family and I write it out because we have all the calendars on the phone, but for some reason, my husband only looks at his stuff on his calendar <laughs> and not my stuff on his calendar. Y'all, anybody here automatically adds stuff to people's calendars. So yeah, I am that person. So instead now I sit down with him and I do a paper sheet to say, okay, breakfast with daddy, right? And so that means mama can take her team call, right? And oh. then lunch with daddy. So mama can do her other call. And then during, <laughs> you know, the in-between daddy has his calls. And, you know, so we're still working out the scheduling, but okay. I've found to, to create sanity. It's like, okay, you're the parent that's going to pay attention to our child during this time. Because in the first couple weeks, we were doing the conference call shuffle. That's what I like oh, to call it. Hashtag conference call shuffle. So I'd be <laughs> on a conference call. He'd be on a conference call. I'd be on a Zoom. He'd be on a Zoom. And then my child is somewhere in my house. And we just praying that he's all together, right? Like <laughs> UCF don't come for me, right? Child Protective Services. So now we've gotten it. We've gotten it together. And at least one parent is paying attention to our child. Because now we, we, we're also taking an early parenting class. I just did an active parenting facilitation workshop. Listen to me. I am a learner and I know that I don't know everything. So I've been taking every class I need to equip myself to be better in this situation. So for me, um, I also realized that she can't be watching uh, TV and tablets all day long, no matter if they're educational. So that means we actually have to spend time with her. So yeah. now we're, we're coming up with small projects, even though you think they last for an hour and they last for about five minutes, but um, <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. It's, yeah. it's just thinking to yourself, okay, like with the schedule, understand things can move. And right. other than that, what do you need for your sanity? So guess what? Mama doesn't join in breakfast time. That's not family time. Okay, that's that's my time. Y'all eat breakfast. I don't okay. need no breakfast. I like that. Okay, y'all y'all eat breakfast, but we do lunch together and we do dinner together. So we're doing at least two meals, right? And then we try to do a family bike ride um, in this process. Like the the children's book I wrote is around traditions, and I found research shows 
that families that have trained traditions and maintain them are more resilient in times like this. And that's really what the book is about is forming family traditions and what family traditions do you celebrate, right? So now, okay, we are starting to bike ride and love it. Now, mind you, growing up in New York, I'd always be on my bike, right? Like <laughs> that was my mode of transportation. Down here, it's like weird. Your parents aren't letting you leave anywhere to go on anybody's yeah. bike. No. <laughs> so, that's not happening. So now like being able to bike ride as a family, that's been fun. And we Zumba every other day. Listen, that is my sanity, y'all. Okay. Yeah. Y'all don't mess with my Zumba. Okay. So we've been, <laughs> we've been shaking it up. And it turns out my daughter loves some soca and calypso. So she'll she'll lead us in a class herself. And oh. it's been beautiful to just take a moment each day to also write down what I'm grateful for. Yeah. And reflect on that. You know, taking the time because what we will do is like, oh man, I messed up today. That child watched three hours of TV, you know, and that's what we, <laughs> we focus on. Or I got in trouble, you know, because I didn't clean up the kitchen and my husband's mad at me or vice versa. You know, you did it last time. No, I did it the last time. I, I gave her a shower, you know, and then we end up in this whole pickle and it's like, no, what are you grateful for right now? You know what? We had some laughs that we never had. We right. sat down and read a book together. We did this, you know, we had more meaningful conversations from the love deck, you know, so it's, yeah. it's, it's been a, a daily process okay. um, in this quarantine, but it's made us more focused on how we relate to each other. And just one last tip on this whole thing, blame it on Cheryl, right? So, blame <laughs> it on Cheryl, yeah. right? So that, that third coworker, right? So yeah. that means you're going around. <laughs> Like blame it on Cheryl, whatever it is, like the socks, the dishes, the bed not made, whatever it is. Listen, you know, Cheryl, she just disrespectful. She just, she just left this stuff. You know, could you help me? You know, Cheryl, Cheryl's doing a lot this today. You know, can you help me clean up? Because you know, Cheryl. So it's, it feels better than saying, can you pick up what you done left over there? You know, so we want to make sure that we're not playing the blame game all day because that game gets old and we already have heard of people tired of their husbands and wives in this situation. You see the memes going around talking about the therapist, like, oh, snap. After <laughs> you know, oh, the divorce rate. You know, let's yeah. not fall into that. You know, you chose no. these people on purpose, so act like it. Can, uh, can you know I make what? you laugh, Coach Cass? Yeah, because she already <laughs> practicing that blaming Cheryl. I was like, who is Cheryl? <laughs> she was talking to my daughter earlier this morning. She was doing something like trying to, she was trying to bake some uh, muffins or something. And, and, and she was like, oh, tell Cheryl to stop doing that. I'm like, who is Cheryl? I know all the women in my house. I know all the women in my house. I got two women in my house, my daughter and my wife. Who the heck is Cheryl? We ain't no man. What's up with that? I was like, no, baby. You gotta listen to Coach <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. He freaked out. Oh, He's like, who the heck is Cheryl? Like, you have some girl in here. I know about. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that made my side hurt. Oh yes, oh, oh, you Cheryl. See, and it gives you a laugh, right? It when you feel you be upset, yeah, you gotta laugh through this stuff, y'all. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure a lot of households need a laugh. Um, <laughs> and that's a good thing. You know what? Mm. I think it's important during this time that we're more intentional about just having fun. Like yes. you talked about the bike rides. That's yeah. something we started doing that we hadn't really done since before we had the kids. That's true. Yeah. You know? Right. Uh, but I was sharing with someone like when we go out in the evenings, you see families together, something we had not seen in a long time. And I said, babe, you know, we've been here like a year and a half and I've never seen any of those people before in my life. I didn't know they lived here. I didn't know there were here. But it's an opportune moment to create memories. You know, I had somebody to... say, uh, I didn't know other black people lived in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh my goodness. God. It was That's so real. One, one person I, 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 um, I spoke to about the same thing. They said they, a family they knew had a whole teenager. They've been, see they've been living in their, in their house for about 15 years. And the, this was the first time they saw that family's child. And they're like, they have a whole teenager at home. Like they had a baby and everything. And we missed the whole thing, my neighbors, right? So wow. yeah, you see a lot more. All right. Now I have a question. You talked a little bit about the love deck. Can mm -hmm. you share some more oh, information? Yes. Cause I'm sure oh, yeah. 
there are conversations that need to be taking place in these households. And I'm sure, like I just saw the first question that you held up on the screen. So can you share a little bit more with the listeners about the love deck? Yeah, so I, I, I try to think of the things that we really don't talk about, but we need to talk about, right? Yeah. And this just makes it fun. So instead of making it an inquisition, make it into a game. Like, oh, let's pick a question of the day. You know, let's just have a conversation. I've used this on road trips with my parents. You know, I've used this with my husband. And I encourage, you know, my clients to use it, right? And getting to know the person before choosing them as the one, right? So no matter where your stage is, meaningful conversations is helpful. So this is, what's your favorite time of day and why? Wow. <clears throat> So what does that what does that lead you to? So my husband looks at me and he's like, you know what, Cass, I started waking up early, you know, and that's making me feel better. And I'm doing well because I wake up early and I work out and I look at him like it's crazy because now I'm staying up to like 2 a.m. to get my time in. So and that's my happy time from midnight to 2 a.m. has been wonderful. And then another happy time for me is from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's like when my brain works. So mm -hmm. when you start coming at me at 730 with all these questions or whatever else is going on, I'm looking at you like you're crazy. So yeah. being able to understand who you're dealing with and knowing that it's not against you, my body's just not wired to function in that wow. capacity at that time of day, you start to love the person for who they are versus trying to change them into what you want them to be. Wow. Mm. That's important. Yes, Very important. <laughs> uh -oh. you know, stepping on some toast. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. No. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Marriage can still win, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh my yes. goodness. Oh my goodness. But for those that are okay, perfect. What were you taught about money growing up? Oh wow. my goodness. Oh yeah. That that's, that's like big. that's our second uh, that's a, a big thing finance. because couples have yes. to be on the <laughs> same page in regards to finances. And like you said, you deal with a lot of successful business women. It, have you found that that's a huge concern when they're thinking about a potential partner, the, oh. the financial aspect of it? Yes, girl. You know, they want to say, well, I need a prenup coach cast. You know, they, <laughs> they might have maybe one house. Well, I need a prenup. Ma'am, you are not a multimillionaire right now. You know, but they're, they're like, I got to save all my coins because my last husband, you know, it was just too much for me. I'm like, this, this, this is crazy. So First of all, okay, there was one one woman that um, was a client of mine, and she was concerned that the man she was dating was too generous, right? Mm -hmm. So she's like, wait a second, you know, this guy, you know, he gives to everybody and gives to everything and da-da-da. So she was concerned of his spending habits because she was like, well, I don't need him just giving away my money, you know? Now, I realize that folks that are generous, you know, are generously blessed. And, you know, that is my my belief, you know, and I tried to talk to her about that, but, you know, not necessarily did that work out. But I, I really, I really see that, you know, my ladies, especially of a certain age, over 40, start to worry about their finances and their retirement and choosing the right person. And are they established and are they together and are they there to mooch, you know, like they don't want a moocher. So, yeah, it does end up being a, a huge concern for, um, Wow. For women, you know, who have established themselves in this world, they they don't want to just give it up. Now, my my question to them is always, well, do you want to be in a relationship? Right. Mm -hmm. Because there has to be some type of compromise. And if, like you say, I'm going to be in California and you're going to be in New York, like where is the middle middle ground? Like we, we all know of one relationship that's doing that. But, you know, outside of outside of that relationship, I, I don't see it working that well, you know? So being able to say, okay, well, how do we come together if this is the person I'm choosing? And I understand that it's a baby steps, right? So you don't necessarily sell everything you have <laughs> right away, right? But right. you know, baby steps, but the big part is doing the work on the front end. Right now I have three of my clients that are getting married, you know, unfortunately their weddings are going to look a little bit different um, in the next coming months. But, you know, I've been forcing them, mm -hmm, very nicely coercing them to uh -huh. take a premarital class, you know, oh, and oh, yeah. and like a, a eight week premarital class, not like a one time sit down situation. 
I'm talking about, you know, every week there's a different topic, there's a different subject, and you talk through these things because you get so focused about the wedding, which right now most of them are called off, right? So, right. hey, you, can't, you yeah. can't focus on that wedding right now, so let's focus on the marriage, right? So let's talk about how you going to make this thing work. Right. Because I, I, I'll be happy if your engagement is called off before you get married to the wrong person that you don't right. even know. Right. So let's do the work now versus just saying, oh, come on, let's just get to the courthouse and sign the paper. <laughs> right. Because you're going to be with this person in quarantine in life. You just don't know what's going to happen. And you need to make sure that this is the person that God has for you. you know? That's true. <clears throat> so much is put on marriage itself because it's and we live right behind disney and guess what the number one theme is yeah princess yeah oh. you know, prince, prince and the, and magical and so, mm -hmm. so many women place a lot of emphasis on that magical day and then after that well i mean i think we invest <laughs> i think a lot of times they invest more time in getting right. prepared for that one day and right. not for the marriage for a lifetime itself. because Invest once you know you take off that gown and remove the makeup and stuff then life starts to settle in yes exactly <laughs> right all the makeup comes off and now you see the socks on the floor and like we were yeah talking about, we missing gotta, the hamper then you gotta call then you gotta call cheryl <laughs> <laughs> right cheryl, cheryl be like, look I, i'm getting a divorce <laughs> cheryl gonna divorce us before we get started <laughs> she's like look yeah, and and that's a huge that's a huge challenge. Yes, you know, is. we've had people come to us about um, things like that, and you're like, wait a minute. So well, these are is, necessary conversations. Yeah. So where can mm -hmm. our listeners get the love deck? Oh, InspireMany.com on InspireMany.com. Just hit store, and you can get the love deck. Yes, we are shipping even in the quarantine. You need it now, baby. I, I got there the glare. You you need it now. So oh, I forgot to say that on one side is affirmations, you know? So for those of you that are watching this, like I don't have anybody to talk to. You always have somebody to talk to. I even use this with my best friend, but on one side is, you know, an affirmation. So I, I attract abundance, you know? I accept change, hallelujah, you know? <laughs> I spend time with the best people, you know? Like remember that you like the people in your house. I create special moments. So yeah. it's just very simple reminders because 90% of our thoughts are negative and 85% of those thoughts are the same thoughts every single day. So yeah. if we sit here and especially if you're watching the news, you know, and just regurgitate these things over and over in our minds, you know, we need to retrain our minds with what's serving us. So one side is affirmations. The other side is meaningful conversation starters. I think that's awesome. We had a, a speaker on a, probably maybe a week or two ago, and she was telling me about how everything that's going on, she's suggesting for her clients to do a media diet. You get a little bit in the morning, a little in the afternoon, a little bit in the evening is portion control. Yeah. So I was thinking when you were talking a lot about mindset shift, that would be perfect to have the affirmations from the love deck. You start, start, you know, thinking, reading those questions and those affirmations in the morning to start mm -hmm. retraining your brain to replace mm -hmm. those negative thoughts with positive ones. So that's a hint, yeah, hint to time. everyone that is yes. listening. Go to inspiremany.com. Get your copy of the love deck. I will be getting my copy today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Replacing our order. <laughs> Yes, I am super excited. And you also, you we talked a little bit um, about the book that you have on your shelf behind you. Would you like to share with our listeners? Yes, because we were talking about the importance <laughs> of traditions and what we could be doing during this time. So it's Princess Zara's birthday tradition. Yes. So is that also available at inspiremany.com? Yeah, if you go to inspiremany.com, up at the top, it says Zara and Ziggy, and you can see how to get the book. We did hit the number one Amazon bestseller during oh, wow. quarantine. Woo! Okay, okay, which is a pretty darn big deal. And we've been holding at the number one new release since we since we uh, began. So I'm, oh, I'm really awesome. excited um, just, just to share a little bit of the story behind the story. Mm -hmm. So I have a three-year-old little girl now, but when she was turning three, I wanted to do a birthday party for her at school. And, you know, I wanted a princess that looks like her, right? And right. I could not 
find one, y'all. Oh, like yeah. everybody's like, oh, but what about Princess Tiana? She didn't have a cup, a plate, a balloon, a nothing. And then when I started to just pay attention in our comings and goings, I went to Macy's and Kohl's and Dillard's to the kids section. They had Peppa Pig, Vampirina, which is a purple vampire. They had uh, mm -hmm. Nancy's white, Elsa and Anna, you know, everything white or an animal, but no black anything. And I was like, wait a second, our nation is so diverse and mm -hmm nothing, not even a Doc McStuffins. I was like, this is crazy. And then when I went to the doctor with her, they'd give her a sticker with a princess on it that looks nothing like her and say, yeah. here, baby, here's my favorite princess. Wow. And I started to think about it like, this is, yeah. this is a little bit deep. I don't, I don't know about this, right? So yeah. we ended up doing a mermaid party for her. Like, okay, oh, Black awesome. Mermaid, we found, I found that. But then when I started to think about it, like, you know what, my baby needs to see a princess because she likes princesses. She's into princesses, like most little girls are. Right. And she's here trying to attach blonde hair to herself. And I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's see what I can do. So I decided I was just gonna do one little small mock-up and maybe put a poster in her room of this little princess, right? Oh, wow. And I went to I went to lunch with a girlfriend who happens to be white, and we were talking about it. And I showed Ava for the first time Princess Zara, and she goes, "Mommy, I don't want this one. I want the other one. I want the white one." Wow. And my girlfriend started crying. I started tearing up. I was like, I didn't wow. know it was that deep. So when you start to think of that black doll versus the white doll test back in the 80s and how every kid from every culture chose the white doll as smarter, prettier, better. It wasn't that I realized it wasn't that anybody told them that. But the fact that you don't see it in mainstream media and it's not cool and people aren't dressing up as that black princess, you know, like. Nobody wants it, right? And then when we start to think of, we show studies that show where did racism really come from? When we look at our textbooks in our schools, you know, uh, Black History Month is what, 28 days? Yeah. And that's not even covered in every school. Right. And so otherwise, what do we learn about Black people in our history, right? We were shot when we did something amazing and we were slaves, right? So where's the kings and the queens and the royalty? And everybody's like, well, there's already Princess Tiana. I'm like, well, she was a frog for about 80% of the movie. No. And and she came from poverty. No, I, I don't know any other princess that came from poverty. If you're going to make up a story, you might as well make her royal. So I'll let you know that Princess Zara comes from royalty. Wow. Her daddy is King Zahir. He teaches the young men in the kingdom how to be young men. And her mother, Queen Adana, teaches the young ladies ballet. And she is on a mission to spread love to solve the world's problems. So the story itself is not about black and white. So this story is about ev for every child, you know, and where I'm seeking to get y'all, like my big vision is to be a cartoon on PBS specifically, oh. right? That's my big vision to be on PBS and to be able to have a mainstream character that every child looks up to. Because it's not enough that every black girl sees herself, which is, is still important, right? Because there's no little girl princess for a black girl to look up to. But then also that my little white girls, Asian girls, Spanish girls wanna be a princess, Zara. Go ahead and attach your Afro puff just like you would your blonde ponytail, right? So it's like, I need there to be some equity and how we represent our children in mainstream society. So Zara and Ziggy is a is a is a big movement, um, and we're just at the first stages. So for anybody listening, if you got a connection at PBS, go ahead and send us to them. I'm just saying, you know, and I'm I'm seeking mainstream coverage to be able to help this get to the next level. It's a it's a passion of mine, and um, I'm really excited. Yeah. I'm putting it, I'm making a note because definitely I'm like, if I come across somebody, I'm like, here, I want you to talk mm. to Coach Cass. And it's so amazing that you said that. It makes me think about our daughter that's 17 now, but we lived in um in South Florida in Boca, right, yeah. Raton for a little while. Mm -hmm. And she came home crying from school one day. Oh, I remember that. And yeah. it broke my heart because she goes, Mommy, I don't want to go back. I was like, Mom, what? I said, Babe, what's going on? They, they told me they don't want to play with me anymore. And I'm right. like, What do you mean? They said they can't play with me anymore because I'm brown. Wow. And that literally broke my heart. I mean, my husband had a, uh, we had our jobs and businesses and stuff there. I was like, I don't care what we got to do. I get me out of here. You got oh, to yeah. take me back to Orlando because I, I can't. Back I, to Orlando, I couldn't. So, yeah. I mean, my wow. heart was broken because. Back then, I'm like, I didn't even, it, I didn't even know where to begin. She was what three? It's two thousand. Yeah, about three or four years old, and yeah. just for her to come home and say that, 
my heart just dropped, Indeed. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, that right the there. Purpose that, of- that, 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 that resonated, you know, like goosebumps, like chills, mm-hmm. that right there. And that's why this is starting so early. My child was two, yeah. right? So you're talking yeah. about two and three years old, yeah. you know, people already shunning or not seeing yourself as equal is straight up from the cartoons and what they see in school. So even in, you know, big dreams, you know, I want princes are everything on everything, right? right? So just think about flashcards, you know, how much diversity is in our activity books, in our coloring books, and people can get a free coloring book by joining the mailing list. Uh, I mean, coloring sheets, sorry, I didn't come out with a coloring book yet, one step at a time. (laughs) But you know, but you know, it's just being able to, to really see themselves from early. It's, yeah, it's 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 a big feat. Like just look at Netflix, right? You can see that they are purposely integrating diversity in their programming. I watched that yeah. Raising Dion, and you saw that one little main character in a wheelchair, yeah. right? That was a big deal, right? Yeah. She Raising Dion, a little black kid as a superhero, and then his best friend in a wheelchair. So diversity yeah. comes from all sides, and and it, it has to be intentional. Disney Disney definitely has to catch up, you know. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. All right. So anybody out there, if you have any connections to PBS, definitely, you know, connect them with Coach Cass because we want to get this out there. And the thing is, when we, you know, went just a little bit more, when we brought um, the kids back here in Orlando, of course, we said, oh, we got to put them in the best schools. And then Mm -hmm. we put them in the private school and guess what? Okay. More scrutiny. (laughs) Don't take me back there. Let's stay positive right now. That's, know, a that's the other side of mama. <laughs> our, our, our sis, we have systemic, it's systemic racism, you know, and I'm grateful for all, um, like I have parents that are white, black, Hispanic, posting pictures of their kids reading Princess Zara and tagging us on social media because, you know, it's just showing that, look, this is cool for all children. Like it's a universal conversation. It's just a princess that happens to be black, you know, like it's just like, She's cool, just like every other princess, you know? So yeah, we gotta make black the new color black. You're like, forget orange is a new black, black is a new black, and we all love it. <laughs> Man, that's the, that's the next movement there. That's the movement now. <laughs> Go ahead. I, so I have a question. As a love oh, coach, as a businesswoman, what do you feel is your greatest strength? Ooh, I love that mug. Oh. <laughs> I like that the heart's on the inside. <laughs> you see a little detail. Man, I got so excited when I got this mug. You see the gold handle, girl. Ooh. Ooh, y'all see that? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, so um, my greatest strength. Mm-hmm. I would say that in terms of coaching, my greatest strength is hearing what you're not saying. Oh, okay. Right. So sometimes we say, well, you know, Coach Cass, I don't need a man. Really? Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? You know, because at the end of the day, we all want to feel loved, yes. heard, companionship. It's how we were built. But uh, really what you're saying is I don't want to look thirsty. I don't want to be desperate. I don't want to look desperate. And and it's not about that. It's okay to want love and desire love and desire conversation that's meaningful and connection. But we get so caught up in what other people think who don't matter, right? I don't care if it's your mama, right? Like they don't matter, right? So at the end of the day, it's all about you, especially in this time where people are going through bouts of depression and whatever else is going on and the pride. Well, I can't do online dating, Coach Cass. Okay. Well, where you going to meet him? With your mask on at the supermarket six feet away? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, h- how's that working for you? At the gas pump? Like, where, where, where are you going to meet this person? Right? So we really just have to have a real conversation that mm-hmm. online dating is a thing. And you can find love with online dating. Right? Like, I actually have a free giveaway for my for my single ladies. I'll put the, let's see, for relationships for busy women.com is the website. So that's how to ace the next date. And then it'll give you access to get my, my courting on quarantine during quarantine, as well as my, my top 10 date ideas while, while in quarantine for my single ladies, you know what I'm saying? So that's for my single ladies, you know, relationships for busy women. 
Dot com. Wow. Yeah. All right. Get the team to put that up. They can get that. Let me do that. Let's see. Relationships for busy women. For busy women. Dot com. Ooh. Yes. I know they're getting hooked up today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, let's go. You can't you can't play around, Sakisha and Eric. Like this, this is a time that's perfect. And so what I tell my busy women is like, you're not that busy anymore, right? So before that was one of the main uh complaints. Oh, Coach Cass, I have so many things going on. Honey, you are home watching Netflix. Like you are not working 24-7. You are on TV, you're thumbing through Instagram, liking some posts. You might be shopping a little bit extra, right? So now there's some extra money in the budget because you're not going out as much. This is the time to do some online dating. You have 10 minutes a day. Like it doesn't have to be all day. And that's the, the issue. Sometimes they're like, oh, well, you know, it's just so overwhelming. You don't have to be on every site and you don't have to do it all day. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be. I have a question from the male perspective, from the men. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we hear men. Well, I I personally don't because I've been married now, going on twenty two years, and I've been with my wife over twenty six years. No. Nah. And you I, still I, like I, each other. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You can tell we're married. Because <laughs> we've been in church, and you know we used to be in church, and people are like. Oh, I didn't know they were married. Yeah. But then they see us. I'm like, oh, we want to be just like you. Uh, Your kids love you. Y'all ask your whole hands and you right. smile. I'm like, yeah, I love my baby. But I But hear they don't know the phases that we had to go right. through to get to that. And that's what we like to share because a right. lot of times with relationships, and I'm sorry for interrupting, no, that they're um they're looking so they're looking so much on the external appearance, right. but right. they're not taking the time to get to know one another. And we got put on to like this TV show. Like it's, what's that on Netflix? You had me watching. Uh, what, Temptation Island? No, no, not Temptation oh, Island. Oh, Blind Love? Yeah, Love, Love Blind. Blind yeah. Where they actually were getting to know one right. another. Right. And that way you kind of removed the physical aspect of right. it because you had to have those conversations. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is really, to me, it was really cool because you yeah. got a chance to talk to someone. I like and it. Get to know them. And right. I think it's important during this time, get to know someone. Cause like you said earlier, sometimes they rush so much into the physical aspect of That's it, right. and, you know, and that kind of messes up their mind when it's time to make uh, some, some wise relate wise, wise decisions. Or, Cause yeah, everything is decisions. based on the physical. But you yeah. know, as you know, men and women are different. <laughs> men are stimulated by sight, right? Yes. Women like talk. And, and emotions come in, you know, but we men, we like, hey, we see something and that's automatically attracted to us. But I, we hear mm -hmm. so much. There aren't any good men out there. They just, I, they don't make any money. They don't, you know, it, it reminds me of what's the movie with um, uh, Think Like a Man, Act Like a Woman. And remember, uh, Taraji P. Henson's like, they oh. have to make six figures. They got to be a business <laughs> owner. They got to be CEO and so tell me your thoughts. Do you, I know you hear a lot of that. Tell me I do. what you tell your, your clients when they say that. Okay. So one of the biggest things I say to them is that stuff doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, when you're sick and you're old and you're saggy, you know, that stuff doesn't matter. So you really have to get to, to the root of what matters. You know, my pastor told me one day, don't marry somebody for what you can pay for, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when you really think about that, right, you could pay for somebody to cook, clean, sex, watch your kids, you know, all the things that we usually determine our life partner on. Oh, mm -hmm. let me tell you how good she is in the kitchen. Let me tell you how great he could fix a car. You know, like those things are not the things to choose a partner on, you know, so you really have to get to the root of what really matters. Does this person sit and listen to your corny jokes and laugh, you know, like, mm -hmm. does this person accept you for the way that you are? Like, for instance, I had a client who's 50, right? So she, she was dating this guy. She's like, oh, Coach Cass, he's so cool. So I was like, tell me a little bit more about him. And when we just talked a little bit more, let me tell y'all, I help women steer clear of the wrong <laughs> one and lead them to the right one. So when we started having real conversation, it turns out that this guy, every time they went on a date, he'd say, you going to wear that? Mm -hmm. You sure about that? <laughs> you gonna wear those boots again? You gonna wear that scarf? And I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't know if I like the flavor that this this man is seasoning with, you know. And and after really taking a look at it, 
he was controlling, you know, and it was just these little seeds that we don't pay attention to because we're excited to spend time with someone and we're going out and we're just kicking it. I'm like, I need you also to clear the air from the people you're just kicking it with. You know, so many women and men have this person kind of on the shelf that they spend time with and really have no intention with. I need you to stop having space fillers, whether there's a quarantine or not. I need you to clear the space. I like that. Stop yeah. having space fillers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you, and you mentioned about uh, determining who is the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, do you have like some kind of wisdom that you normally tell your clients like, okay, you know, this is what you typically, you know, if, if you hear this, that's a red flag. If not, yes. you know, yeah. So now, now the thing is I'm going to tell your listeners and your watchers, but I'm going to tell yeah. you something. They still, I'm not going to do it because what I find <laughs> is that I can tell you until you're blue in the face, but then when we're really coaching one-on-one, -on -one, especially for like my VIP clients or my ladies that are in my real love network membership community is that they'll say, oh, coach cast this guy. I'm like, wait a second. Can we go back to the basics, please? Like let's review here. And for instance, I had a VIP client, right? So this is my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Um, she had two guys she was dating. One, the guy she was trying to, you know, this is the man for me, was like Pepe Le Pew. Mm, you are so beautiful to me. Your eyes are like the ocean. You know, like all that stuff. You know, she's like, oh, Coach Cass, this guy's awesome. You know, bare skin rugs, sexy, sexy pop bottles. I'm like, okay, I don't know about that. Let's let's keep dating the other guy too, right? Let's Let's keep paying attention to the other guy too. And now she's married to the other guy, y'all, right? Uh -huh. Um, and I can't tell you how many times that has happened with my clients that I help them choose the other guy, right? Um, so they're, they'll be bent, hell bent on this one person. I'm like, ah, let's just keep dating to see what else is in the mix. Um, and mm. bomb, that person wasn't it. But on their own, with their own intuition, gut instinct, their girlfriends, it's like blind leading the blind, right? So it's like, everybody's like, oh yeah, this is it. I'm like, ah. Let's just pause a second. So usually what I say is S-A-T, right? So it's three things. S is you feel safe and secure. Mm -hmm. A, you can authentically be yourself. And T, this is someone that you can trust, mm -hmm. right? So looking at those three at the very basis, you know, of course, there's, there's things that you stack on top of that. I don't necessarily believe in the list of the six figure no kids, never divorced, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe in that stuff. But it's, you know, like there's core basic things and that is the basics of where you begin. S-A-T. Because I, I had another client that, you know, she wanted someone to go to galas with and uh, balls and someone that could represent well and all that. But when we got down to it, she just wanted somebody that would chill with her in her sweatpants without her makeup on, you know, like that wouldn't judge her. She had the sniffles. That's really what she wanted. You know, at the end of the day, she could care less about the balls, but that's what she led with. You know, like, you know, let's see how he stands up in society, you know, and now she's married <laughs> to a great guy who could do both. Right. So uh, come on now. We just sometimes we focus on the wrong situation. That was something I was going to ask. Do you find that you have a lot of this, some successful women that are there? looking for one thing, but it's actually something else that they need. If that Heck yeah, a hundred percent of the time, a hundred percent of the time I have clients that'll say, you know, coach Cass, let me tell you, I need someone that doesn't have any kids because I want kids of my own and I don't need any baby mama drama. I need mm -hmm. someone that, you know, has a six figure salary because, you know, I don't want anyone to mooch off of me. And then, you know, I need someone that, you know, can treat me right. And, um, maybe go to church on Sunday, right? So that'll be like the basis of what they're looking for. I'm like, okay, well, let's really talk about this. If you have no children and you're over the age of 40 and he has a child, I see that as a bonus, yeah. right? So right. you don't necessarily have to birth anybody or go through IVF and all that. And I understand the, the physical want to have a child, but right. you might have an issue. You've never tried. Right. Right. You don't know. Right. So right. you're going through all this and then you may not have anybody. Right. So let's just think about, all right, this person has a child. How old is the child? Oh, he's six. Is a child like you? Yeah. Well, OK, this is somebody that you don't have to birth. Listen, my stepmom is an awesome mom to me. I met her when I was three. 
right? And I call her mom. I still have my real mom and my stepmom. They're both my real moms, right? And my mom calls my stepmom my mom. So we have made it in our family that I have three parents, my stepmom, my mom, and my dad. So I have a bonus mom and it's awesome, right? So, and she didn't have children of her own and that's okay because I treat her just like she's my mom. And my granddaughter, my granddaughter, my daughter calls her grandma. And so she still has that feeling of having a grandchild and she even looks like her, which is just so crazy, right? <laughs> so, it's like no blood relation, but she looks just like my, my stepmom. So it's just so beautiful. So the fact that we commit to, well, this is what it has to look like, you are edging yourself out from many blessings that can happen, right? This is the only place where like, it can only happen like this. When you have a business, right, y'all? You're like, yo, I'm gonna get a client however they come, right? <laughs> Clever, right. however. Right. So however, especially in a quarantine, we're going to get these clients however they come. But with love, it's like, no, you know, if it doesn't come in this perfect heart shaped box, right. you know, with the bows and the butterflies, with the doves and the ducks, you know, however, if it doesn't come like this, I don't want it. If it's not packaged right with the gold foil stamp, <laughs> I don't want it, you know. But if it's a client, boo, you better you better slide in the DM. The cool pigeon, you know, so I just need us to look at this just like we do business. However it comes, I accept it, right? If it's for me, it's for me. However it comes, I accept it. If it's for me, it's for me. That's it. Wow. That makes good sense. But I love that. I love that SAT. Yeah. I really love that. I'm like. I need more room for notes now. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. And that's just really awesome. Man, but that's is... been, um, that's really great because, you know, everybody, um, you know, they, that's they, like, they come with their criteria or, yes. I mean, what's the movie? Um, Nobody's Fool. You know, mm -hmm. she was the, the lady yeah, was she like, she was going off the list based on her mom. And I'm like, that's not real, you yeah. know? And the perfect person is sitting there, right? Yeah. But, they don't fit your criteria right. and you miss out, you know? And that's, out huge. and that's unfortunate because a lot of times we do those based on our previous experiences or past experiences. Like when I met my husband, amazing, handsome, uh, but he was an athlete and I had a mm, no, no athlete. So can you imagine? I would have missed my blessing had yeah. I, you know, had I just said, you know, oh, no, he's an athlete. No, off the list. No, he's amazing. I mean, he led me back to God. He's been a strength, a, a pillar of strength in our family and for our kids. So I am I'm like excited. I'm thankful. And I just encourage more women out there to I understand it's good to have, you know, in, um, in your mind what you like, but also be flexible because it doesn't mean that God's going to bring your package exactly the way you deliver it. You exactly. Listen to me. I have a client that was like, Coach Cass, I don't know. I went on this date with this guy. I'm not totally attracted to him. I said, but did you have a good time? She said, I had the best time I've ever had in my life. I said, wait a second now. Okay, so you had the best time, but you're not sure you're too attracted to him. I said, just go on another date. Just, just go on another date. She's been dating this guy for almost a year now. They're talking about marriage. And wow. literally, she's like, he speaks all of my love languages. Yeah. All of them. You know, so sometimes we, we base everything on the physical, but I remind you that the physical fades. No matter how sexy the person is, if they open their mouth and they have nothing to say, they get real ugly real quick. You know, yeah. so if we just focus on that, you know, that's that's not gonna help you, you know, especially if if they're a slob and everything else that that gets under your under your your nerves, you know, mm -hmm. all that sexiness yeah. goes out the window. You're like, this is get on my nerves. And everybody's like, oh well, your husband or wife is so cute. You're like, really? Because you don't even see it anymore because you're right. so annoyed. So mm -hmm. having that true connection with someone, right, is 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 the biggest part in this whole yeah. equation. Yeah. But I, I like that again. That's that's powerful. And I just keep thinking about that SAT, making sure they feel safe and secure, mm -hmm. that you can authentically be yourself and you got to be able to trust them. Man, this has been so good and so <laughs> oh, inspiring. Right. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, now I see why it's called Inspire Many. <laughs> hey, yes. well, we don't want to uh, run over the time. Um, so, Coach Cass, tell everybody uh, about your upcoming events. And you told us a little bit about your, your, your book, which is great. And Are there anything else um, that you want to tell people that could be some potential clients yeah. um, 
you know, tell them also about um, your relationships for busy women. Um, how can they, you know, register or get in contact with you? Okay, so very simply, they can go to inspiremany.com and you can book a time for us to have a conversation to see how I can best support you. You know, we do have a monthly membership in which I help support you from self love to real love, along with other women from around the country that are professional women, majority over 40, who may have been divorced and is like, what is dating again? What does this whole look like? You know, so if you're saying to yourself, I don't know if I'm ready to date you're ready to be in the real love network. This is the perfect place for you to be. If you're a person that's like, ah, I'm dating, but I don't know how to choose the right one. You're ready to be in the real love network. And we support you through being in a relationship because y'all already know it's easy to mess this thing up, right? Self-sabotage is real, right? So then after y'all are married, y'all can check out Eric and Dr. Sakisha, you know, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a continuum. We work, we work hand in hand, you know, there's a nice, beautiful handoff to be able to to, to support you in your journey, right? To be able to be here to support you guys in your journey. So yeah, so whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group, those are my main offerings when it comes to my, my single ladies. If you're a man watching this and you're like, well, I need help too. If you're serious, yeah, mm. only if you're serious, yeah. will I have a conversation with you because I ain't got time for the foolishness. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, and so if you're saying to yourself, Coach Cass, I don't need a man, then we don't need to have a conversation. It's, <laughs> this is not. This is this is only for women that desire love, and it hasn't been working out for you. That's who I support. And otherwise, spread the word about yes. Nara and Ziggy. Like, don't play, don't play any games. Buy the book, number one. Buy it for a child. If you don't have any children, buy it for yourself. Buy it for some children you know. What's so cool is the other day my mom bought one in New York. There's nobody in her house but her. And then my daughter and my mom read the book to my daughter through the phone. You know, so that was yeah. so cool. You know, so you guys could be innovative with it. Uh, I have another person that bought 10 for an orphanage in Mexico to help them learn English, but to be able to see different types of characters, right? The, the diversity on your bookshelf, no matter if you're white or black, it's important to have diversity, right? So I have, you know, like diverse individuals. Let me see. I'm like, I'm like looking through all my stuff. But then you have, you know, we have black, white, we got Hispanic, we got Asian, you know, so being able to have a diverse bookshelf for children, whether you have them or not, you know, it's important. Spread the message, follow us on Instagram. Um, at Inspire Many on Instagram. We just hit 5,000 followers. So excited. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so how long it takes us to get to 10, you know? So as a driven woman, we always have the next goal in mind. So yeah, you know, follow us. I, I have really cute Insta stories and such. And um, for those who are on Facebook, I'm Ask Coach Cass on Facebook. So, you know, just let's have a conversation. And if you know someone that, wants to interview me on love relationships or diversity i'm i'm your girl you know i'm here for you we have a great conversation i appreciate y'all having me and oh, uh, thank you so much this has been a really good really good conversation like oh, yeah, enjoy it. It. this is great so, for great. all my family that's tuning in make sure that you follow um, Dr. Sakisha and Eric and Marriage Can Win and make sure that you support their movement because it goes totally in line with mine, you know, in terms of uplifting our folks to, to stay married. Hello. Ooh, struggling to keep the vows book.com. Ooh, yes. Yes. quarantine. Yes. <laughs> I, I've been hearing all the stories. So pick up their book. Make sure you read it together as a couple right? That's one of the things that they say helps couples is to talk about something other than the kids work in the news is to be able to talk about something more. So go ahead and read their book, have conversation about it. Even if it's once a week, we're we going to be in this for a while. So you can spread it out. Yes. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We're definitely uh, excited uh, with having you on the show. This has been yeah. so awesome. Been a great show. And I'm, we're so glad that um, all of our listeners and, and yeah. uh, um, viewers, um, they're getting so much wisdom and knowledge and yeah. now they know where to go. So there's yeah. no more complaining. It's up to <laughs> yes. you guys now to make the decision to, if you're going to invest in a relationship, you need to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And she is the one to reach out yes. to and invest in your relationship. Make sure that you can choose the right one yes. for a lifetime because you choose the wrong one, you have 
a lifetime of heartaches, mental challenges, emotional, everything, yeah. money that causes that you have to go through with divorce. So you might as well put the money in now yes. and invest in yourself and your relationship for the future. So contact Coach Cass. Yes. She laid it out. There's no excuse. It's <laughs> up to right. you. But uh, yes, struggling to keep the vow. And this is where Sakisha and I do get a chance. Yeah. We talk about not only the, the defining moment in our life, but yes. the defining moment in our relationship yes. that actually birthed the first book, yeah. uh, Marriage Can Win. Yeah. And you know, with that book, of course, we, we tackle the challenges, what we call the great divide, communication, finance. And we say intimacy, but it's really sex. <laughs> And the thing okay. is, we went through all the challenges that, that, that we talk about Absolutely. in that three divide. And so <laughs> we're living it. But in our fourth book now, Struggling to Keep the Vials, mm -hmm. this is where we talk about that defining moment in our relationship. And we, we're transparent. Yeah. And then we also have invited about 12 other authors to be a part of it. So yeah. everybody's talking about their defining moment yeah. in their marriage and how they in overcame this in their relationships. Yeah. So that's why... Today, you're really getting the best of both worlds, dating and marriage and how to, to get through it. But anyway, so I diverse. Yeah, but, no, huh? no, you're good. You're, there. you're fine. You're fine. So everybody, um, also, uh, like she said, join us um, every Tuesday. And we're going to have Coach Cass on the Love Radio Network <laughs> Tuesday uh, at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. We have the Love Radio Network. We're going to get her on there as well. So that way you'll be able to yeah. call in and, and ask, ask questions. questions and be interactive <laughs> and, um, and really, you know, get some of that wisdom from her. All right. So we want to thank all of our, our listeners for tuning in. If you're watching live or if you're watching the replay, I'm trying to respond to all of the comments. <laughs> I mean, that is, it's been yeah, amazing. You. Thank you guys so much to Sean and to Nicole, to Trell. And I've, I've seen the names crawl coming across the screen and I'm Shelly trying fan, fan, Oh, Shelly. Oh, Shelly's amazing. She's one of yes. our co-authors. She's, she, co -authors. she's yeah. amazing. William, Dallas, William Melanie. Dallas. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's so many. Okay. Let me give a shout out to Hey Roger. Hi Nicole. Hey Marissa. Hey Adele. What's up Veronica? I got my people watching too. Hey, hey, Woo! let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Represent. Yes. <laughs> but but it's been an amazing time. Amazing. I mean, I uh, give hugs uh, <laughs> to to Andy and Ava oh, yes, for Tom, us. Thank you. Um, oh yes, thank you so much for sharing your time with us because oh, we know the room is okay. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right, but thank you again, Coach Cass, and we'd love to have you on the show again and also on our Love Radio Network. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so to all of our viewers, take care. Until next time. Bye, guys. Time. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. All right. Bye. <laughs>